Hello, I'm Jim Edgen with Gravity Golf. I've got a good one for you today. There absolutely is a cheat code in putting. Very few people know about it, and of the ones that do, very few of them take advantage of it. We're gonna talk about it today. Okay, before you can understand the cheat code and take advantage of it, you have to understand kinetic energy. Kinetic energy simply is the energy that is created when an object is in motion. The mass and the velocity of that object will then create a kinetic energy that will be transferred to the ball. Some of it, not all of it, that's a different story. But some of that kinetic energy will be transferred to the ball. So. If you've got a short putt, of course, we're gonna to have to produce uh, less kinetic energy to cover that distance. A long putt, we're gonna to have to have more kinetic energy to cover that distance. All right, so what you gotta look at when we start talking about uh, creating kinetic energy, and that is the mass that's in motion, the amount of mass, and the velocity that we're creating. So we can increase the kinetic energy by increasing either one of those or both of them. If we can connect more mass at a given velocity, the ball's gonna go further. If we create more velocity at a given mass, the ball's gonna go further, right? So m most everybody looks to increase distance by increasing velocity. So I want you to think one, open your mind up a little bit and think one second here about increasing the kinetic energy that is created by connecting more of your mass to the putt, okay? All right, so that, that brings us to, to the techniques that are used to putt. Now, I wanna be clear with you. Uh, putting, there's nothing different about putting than there is about hitting a driver. It's still the same math, it's still the same science. The difference is most people see putting as something different. So we don't, those people don't power their putts the same way they do their drives or their, or their uh, approach shots. They get on a steady base, lock their core down, and they take their upper body, the weight of their arms and their shoulders, and they make the motion with just that mass of their upper body, the arms and the shoulders. And on the average man, that's 15 or 20 pounds maybe. All right, so to cover a certain distance, and let's just say 30 feet, if I use that much mass, there is a velocity that's gonna be required to get the amount of kinetic energy to that 30 uh, foot distance. If I can find a way to increase the mass, I can, I can use less velocity. So in using less velocity, I'm gonna use less of my potential energy to create it. And it's gonna be a more reliable way to move the golf ball. Now, now the next part that comes into play are the laws of motion. And the law says for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. David Lee identified that the action of applying upper body muscle on the downswing, the reaction is a jump in the swing plane. That, that's, that, that's not his opinion, it's a, it's a fact. That jump in the swing plane creates poor path integrity and miss hits, right? So we can be more compliant with the laws if we learn to hook more mass up and power it the same way we do our big swing with, with core rotation, okay? Now, across the board, m most people nowadays power their big swing with core rotation and upper body. So we, we don't need upper body in either one of them, the, the big swing or this. But, but if we use the core rotation, then we are connecting more mass 
okay? So let me demonstrate a couple here. I'm gonna take a conventional setup and I'm going to take the weight of my arms and my shoulders and I'm gonna see if I can move this down there to that 30 foot pin, okay? Weight equally or somewhat equally on both feet and I'm gonna take my arms and my shoulders and I'm gonna shove the ball down at the hole. Okay, that distance was actually pretty good. I missed the line a little bit, but the distance control was pretty good, okay? Now, I'm gonna connect more mass by leaning over to my front foot and using my core, putting all this mass into motion, and I'm gonna see if I can cover that same distance with less velocity. So I had to do some editing here. I got a little too excited and knocked the camera over. So anyway, onward we go. Okay, so that was probably a little bit of an accident that I made that second one because I paid very little attention on either one of those to the geometry. I was more concerned with trying to create the kinetic energy required to cover the distance. But because it's friendlier, Sometimes you get a friendlier result without even trying, okay? So it's better to be lucky than good, some people say, right? So anyway, so, so in closing, let's just, let's just say this. If you can find a way to connect more mass, you'll require less use of your potential energy that you need to create more velocity and you'll get a better, more consistent outcome, okay? Uh, give me a like and a share possibly leave me a comment if you've got any questions you can check us out at gravitygolf.com you can also email me if you don't want to get on a public forum email me jim at gravitygolf.com putting on the arc there really is a, a cheater mechanism in it the, the good thing is it's a cheater but it's legal so stay safe and keep swinging